I'm Hazel, it is officially Saturday, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WOW news of the week, what I've been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week, the big spicy sizzling headline of the week was blue-eyed blood elves for everybody. High elves for all. So blue-eyed blood elves are going to be a player option. Now this was something that we were kind of expecting, but not really because A, they showed up in the data files, but then Ian said that they weren't gonna happen. And now they're happening because things change. So in Shadowlands, you are going to be able to customize your blood elves to have blue eyes, and you're going to be able to customize your void elves to have blue eyes. The second bit I think is even more exciting for me. I think it depends on how invested you are in high elves. There are also more skin tones for not just blood elves, but blood elves and void elves. So there are going to be light and dark skin tones available for both blood elves and void elves along with the blue eyes. So you can make basically a blood elf on Alliance, but with fun hair in Shadowlands. If I had to guess, I don't think that this means they're going to continue expanding options to allied races. I think this was just them giving the high elf looking elves to everyone, Alliance and Horde, just so that the forums can live another day. I do not see, for example, Nightborn getting night elf options, at least not anytime soon. I don't know if I'm exactly marking my calendar for the day that I can personally make a Blood Elf looking Void Elf, but what I am excited for is between this, basically having visually almost identical Blood Elf models on both factions, and then of course Pandaren, I think they're really ripping off a band-aid of, you know, the whole uh, character silhouettes tell you what faction a character is before you can see the details, because that hasn't been true in a long, long time. And I'm hoping that with that argument out of the way, that there is just like a chance in Bastion for us to one day eventually be able to switch factions with a given character. Um, I have given up on my dream of having the factions dissolved. Instead, I just want to be able to defect, although, you know, probably not very often. But I think that letting characters switch factions so that you can have any race on either faction would go a long way towards at least perceived fairness in terms of racials and like the world first race, if you can have any racials on a team of either faction. Then it's really just about, well, all the other raiders are on this one. <laughs> I should be very clear that faction switching is not coming in Shadowlands and it has never been hinted at and it is a pipe dream that I just want and has no evidence behind it. So this is not news, that part is speculation. But the skin colors and eye colors for Void Elves and Blood Elves, those are coming. Uh, what else happened this week? BlizzCon 2020 was canceled and nobody was surprised. So they made an announcement. They said, you know, for coronavirus reasons, they're not going to be doing a BlizzCon this year. And they said they are considering an online event, but not until early 2021. I know there was a lot of speculation flying around that if they decided to not do BlizzCon, they would do like an online only event in November. But it doesn't super surprise me that they've decided to not try to scrape together like an online BlizzCon in November, just because the whole prospect, I think, of having a virtual ticket experience without a BlizzCon to film the virtual ticket of, having to do it all just online and from scratch, is a project that might be better tackled when you don't have a team that is desperately trying to get Shadowlands out on time while also trying to like parent their kids from home and you know stay sane i think that the team's probably working on enough right now so that doesn't that doesn't surprise me too much um i am obviously disappointed i have been to two blizzcon so far and i'm looking forward to going to more when it is safe to do so but i think we all saw this coming if you've ever been to blizzcon then you know it's just a massive petri dish of beautiful nerds like you just take thousands of people and fly them in from all over the world and then you sleep deprive them and then a good chunk of them are going to drink and not get hydrated enough which will all kind of depress their immune systems and then you put them in crowded buildings and then you have them just like mix around with like high fives and handshakes and hugs and partying and it's 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 almost impossible to not get sick every year i have done the hand sanitizer thing i have done my very best um and every year i have gotten horribly ill and that was in a pre-covid19 world so i don't know what blizzcon's gonna look like when it does eventually get back underway but i'm not shocked that it won't be this year if you are feeling a little bit uh peaky for news that's not a phrase jonesing for news if you want news, um, there's going to be a Shadowlands reveal live stream. They've announced that uh, John Height and Ian are going to be doing a news update live stream on the 9th of June, so a week and a bit away. Uh, we don't know yet what they're going to talk about, but probably something Shadowlands and probably something good, otherwise they wouldn't make a whole thing of it. In my wild life this week, I got pretty caught up in echo farming. I was very excited about the corruption vendor and started doing, you know, assaults and dailies and visions and emissaries on two characters. And then it occurred to me that aside from, you know, getting a little set up for PVP to get some vicious mounts, 
I'm not exactly gearing up for anything, you know? I'm, I'm done raiding for the tier, so maybe, maybe I don't need to work that hard. I'm still pecking away at collectible stuff, but I apparently have a hard limit of one set of assault dailies per day. I cannot do those on more than one character. I don't know how people do it. And a little uh, meta channel milestone. Uh, yesterday, the 29th, marks my seventh year on YouTube. Uh, and you'd, you'd think I would have learned something by now. And maybe I did, but uh, <laughs> I learned very slowly. But thank you guys for sticking around. It is very cool that I get to do this, and I wouldn't be able to do it if it were not for you guys, so thank you. Questions from this week. Zysoring asks, I just got the next step of Flesh and Horror, and it says I need four pages. I can do that in a full clear, but I keep hearing YouTubers say that you only need two max now. What's the deal? So um, I have a correction to issue. A couple of videos ago when I was talking about the cloak catch up, I misunderstood and I said that no level would require more than two pages. When what the truth is, is that no level requires more than one full clear. So the middle levels of fear and flesh, which is before you get into requiring lost zones, a, a couple of those upgrade levels do require four pages because you can now get those fear and flesh pages from chess for completing any of the four zones, including the harder lost ones. That was definitely my mistake, so I'm sorry, oopsie daisy do. Uh, I, I thought it was weird that they would require four pages for the middle levels after catch up, because that's kind of predicated on older catch up logic. Because originally, when they put the cloak upgrade system in, you could not get fear and flesh pages from harder zones at all. And it was only kind of like a middle ground catch up hotfixy thing where they said, okay, fine, if you do a full clear, we'll give you four pages. And I didn't think that they would have used that same logic for this catch up, but apparently they did. So yeah, a couple levels do need four pages, but you only need one run per level. And once you get to needing the third rank of pages, those you will only ever need two at a time of, because those only come from that third rank hardest lost area, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Alucard Child asks, you got faceless with your Shadow Priest. Do you have any tips? I still need to get it done with mine. So three things that really changed the solo Shadow Priest horrific vision game for me. One of them was rank three Breath of the Dying as your major essence. For a while I was rocking the beam thing and the beam thing is on far too long of a cooldown. Uh, I did much better with rank three Breath of the Dying. And what I did is I made sure that I could see the current enemy health total in my unit frame so that I could see when to snipe off an enemy with Breath of the Dying and get a killing blow. Because as long as you're continually getting killing blows with it, it's going to do 100% extra damage and have a ridiculously short like five second cooldown. So you just kind of do very small pulls, that's my second tip, is don't feel like you have to do AoE pulls. Um, you have plenty of time to just kind of walk through the horrific vision at a reasonable pace. You do not need to rush, you do not need to run, you do not need to do AoE pulls. Um, that's an other classes kind of thing. Um, on Shadow Priest, I had the best results just pulling one pack at a time and basically single targeting down most mobs um, as, and sniping them off one at a time with Breath of the Dying. That gave me the best damage. Your AoE kind of takes too long to get cooking to make it worth it to do like big, big pulls. And once you have multiple packs at the same same time you're dealing with like layered mechanics on top of double madnesses and everything else so it's just not worth it just one pack at a time one mob at a time kind of and that leads into my third tip which is just pretend you're not a dot class um i was only using both of my dots on like bosses and big elite like named enemies um for your everyday average minion and by that I mean normal mob, I was basically just pr forgetting about the dots because they're kind of wasted globals at that point. Just focus on your mind blast, your void eruption, your void bolts. Make like a single target spec and just do one mob at a time. Uh, that's what worked for me. I'm sure there's more ways to do it, but that was definitely the most comfortable way for me to get my solo five mask full clears. I will say that Warcraft Priest did a very thorough solo Shadow Priest horrific vision guide, um, and I referred back to that quite a bit, so I will link that down below. Uh, Margo asks, I think you've had your PC for over a year now. Are you still satisfied with it and the components you chose? Thinking of building my first gaming PC, looking for recommendations, it can be pretty confusing to find the right components for your needs. So, uh, when did I build this thing? Uh, it's been a while, time flies, but yeah, it's been great. Um, I would not recommend specific parts out of my build for like your everyday gaming computer because it's going to be overkill unless you just want to celebrate your new computer by spending a lot of money on it. But the big takeaway from this build is one, uh, Ryzen's pretty cool. I, up to a certain point in my life, would never have considered anything other than an Intel processor. And this thing's a Ryzen Threadripper, and this thing can get it. Um, and I've heard equally good things about the lower tier Ryzen processors for gaming. They are no longer 
a bad choice and they're much more economic. So I would say strongly look into the Ryzen processors. Make sure that you get one or more SSDs. They're not that expensive anymore relative to hard drives and you want to have your operating system and your WoW on solid state because that's going to greatly, greatly, greatly improve all of your load times. And then uh, make sure that you don't cheap out on any individual parts, even if they're not that exciting. Specifically, your motherboard and your power supply and to some extent your case, but mostly your motherboard and power supply are going to be what determines what you can upgrade later. Um, so while it's not as exciting to spend money on those compared to like your flashy processor and graphics card, uh, making sure that you don't cheap out too much with like a weird cheap motherboard or an underpowered power supply is going to allow you to make upgrades in the future when you one day want to have stronger graphics. Don't go like insane with your power supply. You don't want to overdo it too much either, but like, you know, get something, get something in the middle. Make sure that your build is proportionately budgeted. And that has been my week. Thank you very much for watching. If you have a question you would like answered in a video like this, please leave it in the comments of the most recent news video. Uh, let me know what you think and have a wonderful, wonderful day.